Good morning. On behalf of all of us assembled here, we would like to welcome all who are visiting with us this morning and to all who are new to our parish family, welcome. If you have not already done so, we ask that all cell phones be silenced at this time. Deacon George will be assisting Father Jim, who will lead us in our celebration of the Eucharist. Please stand. We invite everyone to please pick up your songbooks and join in singing our gathering song, number 649, There is a Longing, 649. Yeah. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each of you this morning. Amen. In today's Gospel, the poor widow teaches us to offer our gifts for the sake of others. As we begin this liturgy, let us look into our hearts and see what we are prepared to give to the Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, you died to take away our sins. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you rose again to bring new life to your people. Christ of mercy. Christ of mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us to generosity of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. O God, protector of the widow and orphan, safe haven for strangers, justice for the oppressed, uphold the poor who hope in you, and sustain those who place their trust in your love. Let no one be deprived of the bread and freedom you provide, but may all people learn to share freely and generously of the good gifts you have bestowed following the example of Jesus, who offered his life for our salvation, and who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen.
A reading from the Book of Kings. In those days, Elijah the prophet went to Zarephath. As he arrived at the entrance of the city, a widow was gathering sticks there. He called out to her, please bring me a small cupful of water to drink. She left to get it, and he called out after her, please bring along a bit of bread. She answered, as the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked. There is only a handful of flour in my jar and a little oil in my jug. Just now I was collecting a couple of sticks to go in and prepare something for myself and my son. When we have eaten it, we shall die. Elijah said to her, do not be afraid. Go and do as you propose, but first make me a little cake and bring it to me. Then you can prepare something for yourself and your son. For the Lord, the God of Israel, says, The jar of flour shall not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry, until the day when the Lord sends rain upon the earth. She left and did as Elijah had said. He was able to eat for a year, and he and her son as well. The jar of flour did not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry, as the Lord had foretold to Elijah. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Christ did not enter into a sanctuary made by hand, a copy of the true one, but heaven itself, that he might now appear before God on our behalf. Not that he might offer himself repeatedly as the high priest enters each year into the sanctuary with blood that is not his own, If that were so, he would have had to suffer repeatedly from the foundation of the world. But now, once for all, he has appeared at the end of the ages to take away sin by his sacrifice. Just as it is appointed that human beings die once, and after this the judgment, so also Christ offered once to take away the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to take away sin, but to bring salvation to those who eagerly await him. The word of the Lord. From the Holy Gospel according to Mark. In the course of his teaching, Jesus said to the crowds, Beware of the scribes who like to go around in long robes and accept greetings in the marketplaces, seats of honor in synagogues, and places of honor at banquets. They devour the house of widows and as a pretext, recite lengthy prayers, they will receive a very severe condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and observed how the crowd put money to the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow also came and put in two small coins worth a few cents. Calling his disciples to himself, he said to them, Amen, I say to you, this poor widow put in more than all the other contributors to the treasury. For they have all contributed from their surplus wealth, but she, from her poverty, has contributed all she had, her whole livelihood. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord. Elijah. Elijah follows through on a command from the word of God to visit a poor widow in Sidon. Everyone in that area at that time is facing life-threatening drought and famine. So the bread and water that Elijah asks the widow for is especially precious. 
Elijah meets the widow as she's preparing the Last Supper for her and her son. Their bodies are ready to give out from lack of nutrition. Still, the widow receives her prophetic guest and shares what little she has. Now, by sending Elijah to the widow, God created an opportunity for an Israelite and a non-Israelite to break bread with one another. He breaks down that boundary, the wall that separated them. God showed that the boundaries that humans erect between people of different customs, nationalities, countries. They are no match for the unifying power of God. God's hospitality knows no bounds. Both Elijah and the widow trust in God's word. The jar of flour shall not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry. So God keeps his promise. In the gospel we see a similar kind of story. Like a vignette of a widow who puts her last two coins, which is a paltry sum worth a few cents, into the temple treasury. Jesus sees all this. He comments that in contrast to those who gave from their surplus, her contribution was all she had, her whole livelihood. Translated from the Greek, it means even more than that. The Greek says, he gave her whole life with those two coins. On one hand, we see this woman as one who embodies Jesus' gift of his whole self. Passion, death, resurrection. All this episode is possession just before Mark writes his passion narrative. It appears that Jesus' words are praiseworthy of the widow's total self gift from her position of want, poverty, and is held out as a model for Jesus' disciples to follow. It is held out as a model for us to follow. Uh, Perhaps another way to understand the gospel is to see that the widow's action comes right on the heels of Jesus' critique of the scribes who thrive on their privilege and seek out honor. But worst of all, Mark tells us, Jesus says they devour the houses of widows. I really don't know what that practice refers to, but the scribes may be the ancient equivalent of maybe televangelists that we see who built money from unsuspecting widows of their last dollars, believing they could buy from them salvation. Mark's Gospel, Jesus is very critical of the temple institution. He warns his disciples not to ever be the kind of leader who would prey on those who are most vulnerable. In our own day, we have too much of that going on already. In these readings, there's a particular warning to religious leaders not to exploit, exploit those who are the poorest. And there is also an invitation to all the faithful, you and me, to emulate the hospitality of God. The total gift of self is replicated in Jesus' self-surrender in love. We are asked to self-surrender in love, in deference for those who are poor and in need. You know, in no way does such a stance glorify poverty, for throughout the gospel, we see Jesus' intense efforts 
to raise up those who are the poorest. Rather, these readings provide reflection on and cause for analysis. To look at the cause of hunger and poverty, and then urging us to do all in our power to eradicate them. And like the poor widow and Jesus himself, this kind of work takes all that we have. Friends, we profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the conscious Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, out of our want, out of our need, we humbly offer our prayers in the Lord no matter how insignificant they may seem, trusting that God will respond to even the smallest of needs. May the church be assigned to the world of the value of self-sacrifice, offering material and spiritual assistance to those who are most in need, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May those elected to public office this past week govern with justice and serve with integrity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May all active, retire, and deceased military, military personnel be remembered with gratitude and prayer this Veterans Day for their unselfish service to all of us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May we always be open to the Lord's call to service and respond willingly and generously to that call. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May Veronica, Picalis, Robert, Gearley, and all our faithful departed receive the salvation won for them by Christ's sacrifice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May God grant these needs which we hold in our hearts. For these needs and for Sister Kathleen Tobin, Charles and Frank, Junior Cipriano and Madison Crossing residents, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Generous God, you have taught us how to give and how to share. Help us to imitate your generosity as you grant our needs and those of all our brothers and sisters who live in poverty. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Friends, please pray that our sacrifice this morning be acceptable to God, who is almighty. Look with favor, we pray, Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion. And we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father of mercies and ever faithful God. For you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer, who always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick, for the sinner, for the alien, and he became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to all the world that you are our Father and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so now with your angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name as we sing with them the hymn of your glory. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love our human family and who walk always with us on our journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, here present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit, to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread. He said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his beloved disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more, giving it to his beloved friends, he said, Take this, all of you, drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood. The blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Great is the mystery of our faith. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate 
the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. We offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ entrusted to us. And grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, with the clergy, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace, and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. And grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her husband, with your apostles and martyrs, with St. Rose and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, with him, and in him, God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. In the name of Jesus, whose words are guiding creation to fulfillment, we pray for the coming of his kingdom as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, may we always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus your Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Friends, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share a sign of peace.
They will come from the east and the west, from the north and the south, to sit at the table in God's kingdom. Blessed are all who are called to the banquet of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be you.
of spiritual communion for our brothers and sisters praying from home. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot receive you at this moment, receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you and unite myself wholly. let us pray. Nourished by this sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy that by the pouring forth of your spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered. And we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. We have the announcements. We are replacing our worn-out hymnals with new hymnals, so please see the bulletin for more information about uh, book plates dedicated to a loved one. Members of the Altar Rosary are selling religious articles in the chapel. This Monday, St. Rose School is holding, once again, the Veterans Day drive through celebration for all U.S. military veterans and their spouses at 12.30 p.m. See the bulletin, you enter from South Street, you drive through, the whole school's out there waving you on and congratulating you. We have veterans with us this morning. Any vets? <laughs> and thank you. you uh, if you know a vet, and they may not be Catholic, doesn't matter, uh, but if you know a vet and would like to have a special way of thanking them, pick them up tomorrow and bring them to the, uh, through the celebration, okay? Columbia Club of Freehold, the Knights of Columbus are holding a memorial Christmas tree fundraiser that can be dedicated in honor or memory of a loved one. The order form is in the bulletin. And the Knights are also collecting donations to send a hero home for the holidays after all Masses this weekend. The Lord be with you. Bow your head for the blessing. Friends, may the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his only Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son 
and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, who is, who was, and who is to come, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Enjoy your day today.